Hi, I'm Rod Beckstrom, CEO of ICANN. We're here in the uh, impressive headquarters of UNESCO in Paris, France, and I'm with the Director General, Irena Bokova, who has recently taken over the helm at, uh, at UNESCO. Congratulations to you, Director General. Thank you very much. Yes. So what's it like to take on this new job? Oh, it's a huge challenge and a big responsibility, and because I'm the first woman, the responsibility is doubled, or expectations are doubled. Everybody says, uh, uh, you have to change this or that, you have to do miracles, and always I respond, no, 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 treat me equally. Just don't place more expectations on me that you would have placed on a man if he was. But I'm really very happy to uh, have signed this agreement with ICANN. Uh, for us, it's an extremely important. Uh, agreement because UNESCO is uh, working uh, first of all in the multilingualism. Uh, we try to promote uh, diversity, cultural diversity. Uh, we work uh, very much into protection, protecting of, and safeguarding of uh, languages in danger. And uh, I think that uh, uh, if we have more domains in the native languages of people, it will give them, first of all, access to information and to internet, and then, of course, uh, freedom of expressing themselves. And I think this is great. This will democratize and will bring a lot more of the, uh, human potential uh, to our world. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're very honored that I can to have this opportunity to sign the agreement with you as well, to partner on internationalized domain names. Uh, you have an amazing global organization, and uh, we're a small internet organization, we're thrilled to work together on this. And, uh, Director General, could you educate us a little, a little bit more about it? what are endangered languages? Give us some examples, or talk about that, and, and what UNESCO does to protect those endangered languages. Well, UNESCO, UNESCO uh, protects cultural diversity in principle. We think that in this globalized world, uh, we should uh, try not to uh, uniformize, if I can say, but uh, everything that, that surrounds us. It, uh, people are sometimes lost because they uh, feel lonely, they feel alone in this uh, global village, as we say, they seek for uh, their own identities, uh, they want to use their own languages, uh, they want to feel more secure, and uh, we're helping uh, uh, these uh, this tendencies. Uh, uh, protect uh, people, people's diversity and uh, human human diversity, and uh, we know that uh, there are every day almost there are languages which disappear. Some disappear because they belong to a very very small group of people, and uh, uh, when this group of people is integrated into a bigger community, uh, languages disappear. But sometimes they disappear because uh, they they are not uh, protected. They are not. Uh, they don't have uh, uh, access to a certain script, or because they are not, their children are not ta taught in school in this language. Mm -hmm. We see it uh, very much in uh, Africa. We see it uh, increasingly much also in Latin America. And uh, uh, Latin American countries recently uh, made a proposal that we might be working on some kind of a, an instrument here at UNESCO on the protection of the ancient uh, languages. Excellent. And I think this is a great idea. And uh, uh, we're, trying, uh, we're trying to promote the, your, the agreement we signed with ACAN will help us very much uh, work in this direction. And I'm sure that member states will be very happy with this. Well, we certainly hope so because we need your help to work with the really small groups that don't have the same national resources that the major language groups have. And we're able to provide the support on our side, but we don't have uh, the, the language skills, the local relationships, and other resources necessary. So uh, how many of these endangered languages are there? There are hundreds of them? They're hundreds, there thousands? They're hundreds. They're hundreds. Okay. So there are countries in Africa which have uh, 50, 60 languages. It's an incredibly, uh, incredible variety of languages around the world. They don't have their own alphabet, uh, their script. But, uh, uh, definitely there are people. And one of the uh, impediments, obstacles to education, including primary education for some countries, because we have uh, the Millennium Development Goals, which were adopted by the United Nations, and we want by uh, 2015 to have universal primary education for all children around the world. And one of the obstacles that uh, we target and we see is that, uh, that these some children, they don't get this primary education in their uh, mother, mother tongue, in their mother language. Mm -hmm. So this creates problems. On one side, of course, it's a, a financial burden on governments. Yes. But on the other side, it's a, 
a pure psychological also and intellectual obstacles to very many children sure. further on to integrate uh, to society to continue their education. Sure. And uh, so we promote either uh, education in both languages, in the mother tongue and the official. Uh, of course, it's a huge challenge because you have to have the translation, the curricula, the manuals, everything. So. It is a big problem, yes. but that's why I think uh, this agreement will help us because internet is really a powerful tool, mm -hmm. even if you don't have the printed uh, books and manuals in the respective language, but you have something on the internet, then you have an access and uh, this process is facilitated. Absolutely. And are you looking at issues as well, such as having the keyboard layouts for these other languages, or the translators on, what are the kind of basket of, of other course, internet yeah, issues that so come different in? Kinds of, uh, uh, well, probably no better software, uh, hardware problems, and uh, uh, and we do have uh, some expertise in some other areas of, uh, of how we can uh, put things together from the perspective of safeguarding these languages and with their variety. So I think we make, can make a very good synergy. That's great. You know, we also we saw one language community create a lot more content on the internet. There's a group we work with called in Catalan called mm -hmm. .cat. Mm -hmm. So when they created .cat, some people said, well, why is this necessary? You know, there's Spain.es and there's all these other websites. And they said, well, we really want to have a place to bring our literature together and our culture and our language. And, and it's been a, 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 like a very special attractor somehow. Apparently a lot of literature uh, and, and content that's very unique to Catalan has come together and so it's been a source of pride for those people and helps to preserve their culture and language. So we're very excited about this partnership again, Mr. Director General, so thank you so much. Thank you very much.